in this video, I'm going to go over what is a p-value and what is statistical significance. The first part is what is a p-value? A p-value is the probability under a specified statistical model, typically the null hypothesis, that a statistical summary of the data would be equal to or more extreme than its observed value. Now that may be a lot to unpack, even to someone who plays with p-values all the time. So I'm going to go over what the American Statistical Association said just to clarify it because it, it is more than just a number that comes out at the end of the test, especially if you're going to continue into a field that deals with p-values on a regular basis. It's very important you understand what it actually means. The ASA put out a statement in 2016 to clarify what a p-value was because so many fields were interpreting it in an inappropriate manner. And it wasn't just the you know Americans. It was, it was actually a range of people from across the world that came down and sat and said, this is what a p-value is. The first principle is p-values can indicate how incompatible the data are with a spe specified statistical model. So you're basically seeing, in regards to the null hypothesis, how compatible is the data that you've observed with that null hypothesis? The second is, p-values do not measure the probability that the studied hypothesis is true or the probability that the data were produced by random chance alone. So this is to combat how a lot of people are saying accepting the null hypothesis because by saying accepting the null hypothesis you're actually saying a philosophical statement that it's true and a hypothesis can't actually state that. That's why when you interpret hypotheses it's fail to reject or reject the null hypothesis. And you'll hear a lot of the time that the p-value is simply the probability of the data produced by random chance alone. That is also incorrect. The third principle is scientific conclusions and business or policy decisions should not be based only on whether a p-value passes a specified threshold. Another way of saying this is the p-value shouldn't be the only basis for a scientific claim you need to look at other things such as the context or qualitative reasoning, the validity of statistical assumptions, and the quality of observations and measurements. And the fourth principle states, proper inference requires full reporting and transparency. And this has to do with the research articles themselves. So this is kind of a, a critique of the fact that if you have significant data, it would typically be published. If you didn't have significant data, it wouldn't be published. And that's inappropriate for a lot of reasons. One, maybe you have an idea and someone's already done it, but you don't know they've done it because they weren't allowed to have their, their study published because the publishing firm or the journal wanted it to be significant statistically and that's just not appropriate in terms of scientific endeavors because you end up with a lot of people wasting their time doing the same study over and over and over again. So it's important to notate the variables that were not significant and to document what hypothesis weren't successful. Number five is a p-value or statistical significance does not measure the size and effect or the importance of a result. That may be contrary to a lot of people's thinking. So the effect is obviously in most cases, especially if you're doing a regression, you're gonna understand that the coefficient is what really measures the effect. The importance though, that's different. And the reason why that's different is because the p-value is influenced by many factors. And it's sometimes it's simply a matter of sample size. Like if you have a million observations, you'd probably have statistical significance in variables that had you only had a thousand, you wouldn't be able to have statistic, statistical significance. So it, it's, it's important to understand what influences a p-value and definitely sample size is one of them. You need to take several things into account when looking at a p-value. And in the context of those things, the p-value can be important, but without the context of those, a p-value by itself is not important. And that's what this is saying. So the last one, by itself, a p-value does not provide a good measure of evidence regarding a model or hypothesis. You really shouldn't just be checking a model with a p-value. You should be checking the model with a p-value and the confidence or credibility or prediction intervals. Uh, you may want to uh, use Bayesian methods 
it depends on what you're looking at. So basically, it's about validating that p-value. That p-value cannot simply be by itself. Uh, if you're using that p-value by itself, just like in principle five, it's not so much context here though, it's validation. And that you don't wanna simply go off one piece of evidence, you want several pieces of evidence basically pointing in the same direction. The second part is statistical significance. So what's statistical significance? Statistical significance is when you have a p-value that is less than the alpha value. So the alpha equals one minus the confidence level. If you have a confidence of 90%, it's going to be an alpha of 0.1. Uh, another name for that alpha is called a type one error. That is the probability you'll have a false positive. So when you're doing a confidence interval, that is what you're naturally putting into the method because it's necessary. You can't have a 100% confidence interval, not without it being basically meaningless. I hope this was helpful. I, it was a, a bit longer just because the p-value is a very important thing in and of itself. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section. And thank you for watching. Stay nerdy, my friends.